AirVenture attracts all kinds of pilots from all around the world and all kinds of aircraft of all shapes and sizes. But this year we've seen something we never saw before, and we're guessing a lot of you have never seen it, a cluster balloon system. I'm Mary Grady reporting for AvWeb, and we're going to talk with Jonathan Trapp. He's the designer and the pilot for this aircraft. The flight experience itself was unparalleled, but what I'm most proud of is having launched from Oshkosh, you know, being part of the Experimental Aircraft Association, and um, something any home builder can appreciate, launching an aircraft they envisioned and they built and launching it from AirVenture. That's what um, I was most excited about. So we launched from EAA AirVenture 2010 from the field we're on right now. In fact, I was aiming to go low and slow, and this aircraft can do low and slow like no other. You can talk to people on the ground, which we did. Um, went out over uh, Oshkosh Air Adventure, and I was going to be at treetop level, but I was about two feet short of treetop level. When I say two feet, it's these two feet, because my feet actually touched the top of the, the Air Academy Lodge as I went out and um, got a, a slow climb going out. Um, floated out over the, the, the Warbirds area, talked with the, the campers on the ground, um, just an exceptional experience. Let me talk about the flight. The flight experience itself is unparalleled. Um, went out in complete silence except for the Goodyear blimp that was circling around us. Um, we lost that airborne companion after maybe a half hour, the sun set. I crossed Lake Winnebago, then um, across 30 miles of land in the dark, and I came to Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan, it's a bit of a misnomer, you know, Lake Michigan. It's a freshwater inland sea, you know, it's a substantial body of water. Um, and we had been scrubbing weather data and we're pretty confident that we could cross that body of water. We first flew it as an ultralight, part 103 rules. Um, it didn't need certification under 155 pounds. But we had some limitations. You can't fly it at night. You can only fly single person. You can't fly internationally. We wanted to do some of those things. So we approached the FAA um, with the help of the EAA, the Home Builders Helpline, um, and requested certification for the aircraft. It took nine rounds of paperwork. It went to our friendly neighborhood FISDO. It went to the um, ACO, it went to the MIDO, it went to, I'm told, the head of the FAA. He issued the airworthiness certificate, but it wasn't quite clear what bit got it. Um, so what gets the end number? What we have the end number on is the load, uh, the load ring. You might call it the load ring that's near the gondola. And it's actually had to be riveted on, which is a bit over-engineered for a balloon. So it's riveted on to a piece of vinyl that's then connected to the uh, tubular nylon webbing, that is the rigging above my head, that physically holds the end number, which goes on to this bit of strap. So as best I can tell, this is the aircraft. There is a certificate and a rating for lighter than air pilots. It's called lighter than air free balloon. So we would love if what came out of this was people elected to become lighter than air pilots. Uh, this is Jonathan Trapp, and it is the Experimental Aircraft Association that has allowed experiences like this. Where else, what other organization can you depart from Oshkosh, AirVenture 2010, float into the sunset over Winnebago, and be joined by airborne companions like the Goodyear Blip? It is incredibly uncommon and unbelievably beautiful. Uh, peaceful as my feet are free above Winnebago and my gas cluster balloon system is above my head. Outstanding adventure, you guys.